Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Black Accountant. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and let me know in the comments of any content you wanna see going forward. It's your boy Mo, and today I want to talk a little bit about budgeting. I know it's a little bit different per person, depending on what your goals are, depending on how you actually choose to save money, and um, just what kind of overall structure that you're kind of budgeting for. Um, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the way that I typically budget and if you see anything here in this video that's particularly helpful then um, feel free to use that I actually do want to provide like the PDF of this document in the description I don't know if YouTube allows me to do that if I can figure it out uh, I'll include the link in the description so let's get into it if anything so this is a um, a monthly budgeting track sheet that I got from one of my friends and it's really really simplistic so this is pretty much something you do on a monthly basis where before the month starts you plan out what your projected costs are gonna be and what you think your expenses are gonna be based on your routines and patterns and then at the end of the month you go ahead and corroborate pretty much whatever you actually spent with whatever you had initially planned so let's look over here where it says projected monthly income. I have um, my former job over here and any extra income that I had anticipated getting. And again, you can always uh, play around with these types of things. You could have multiple rows um, and it depends on how detailed or not detailed that you want to be. But in this case, we have our projected monthly income and our actual monthly income. So here I'm at the beginning of the month. I'm going to put in how much I expect to earn before or after taxes, whatever over here and then whatever extra money I think I might have um, before the month starts over here. And then I'll give you a calculation. So let's assume 2000 and let's assume over here something like 600, right? So let's assume 2,600. So it's gonna give us our projected balance. Actual balance is gonna show a zero until the end when you come in and input your numbers. That's why you have this negative difference here. However, um, this I like this template because you could just kind of generally categorize things into different little segments or areas and then you could put in your projected cost and then for things that are regular like your bills you're gonna start to know how much the actual amount is just off the strength of you having paid that every month and this is just like a nice little way of getting things um, situated into uh, nice little categories for you yeah so I do this and I'm just going to do one of the little boxes just to show you that example. So like I pay for my car, let's say 300 a month. And then I don't take the bus or the taxi. This just happens to be on there. Registration, that's not coming up this coming month. Fuel, I let's say I expect to spend like 80 because I commute to like long distances. Uh, maintenance, like let's assume an oil change and a filter change or whatever else, let's say $100 and other could be, let's just give it an allowance of like 50 bucks. And again, all these costs are gonna be totaled up for your projected cost, so then you can tweak it around until it gets to whatever you want your projected balance to be. Um, so you don't want to put a bunch of projected costs that are gonna be way over whatever you're budgeting for. So let's say you allocate yourself a little budget of things, and then you can make your categories based on that. And then at the end of the month, you come in and like probably print out or just take a PDF copy of your statements from whatever bank that you have. So say you use a lot of your checking or uh, checking account money, um, you can pretty much print out a statement at the end of every uh, month and then just kind of input those amounts here, which is what I do. I also have what's called um, the long-term debt area. And I have that on the separate spreadsheet where I keep track of my subscriptions and I keep track of whatever I have to pay on a monthly basis. So let me see if I can show that here. And I've actually blacked out a specific part of it just because I don't want everybody to see how much I owe <laughs> in terms of different debts, but I would update this one every time I've made a payment. So pretty much I update it at the beginning and end of a month. And over here, it'll be however much is left over of your total debt so that you know how much your long-term debts are. And then usually you might want to put in an interest rate, especially if you're trying to prioritize paying off certain things. 
but I didn't really include that here because I, I was kind of lazy and didn't feel like going through every channel to do that. What is important though, is making sure you know what date your payments are due and then having the amounts that you're willing to pay or going to pay for those months listed as well so that when you're doing your budgeting, especially when you're looking at your upcoming week and upcoming days, you know what you have to pay back and you know um, uh, pretty much how much income you should have in your account to cover those costs at that time. Same thing with subscriptions. Um, I have it by whatever it is that I'm subscribed to, how much that costs, is it yearly or monthly basis, and then when is the next time it's gonna be charged, and then whether or not it's gonna be active for that month. So over here, I just change it to whatever the current month is. Right now it's February, so I'm not gonna be using this subscription because I don't need it this month. Same thing with Amazon Prime. I'm not really per planning to purchase anything in February. Uh, so those are both canceled, which is just, I have this total here that just shows whatever I'm actually gonna be paying for this month with the whole cost over here. And again, I have the dates available so that I can plan for it in advance of when I'm going to have to take that money out of my account so that I have the amounts readily available. So those are like the main things that you could do, especially if you're somebody that likes to plan by the, by the dollar, by the cent, whatever it is. And if you're more comfortable really viewing and going through your finances. Other, there's a bunch of apps that you could use. One of the ones that I typically use is Truebill. So on that one, it just links to your bank account and then it just shows you like, hey, these are what we've deemed to be your expenses and these are what we've deemed to be like regular recurring costs. And then you can mark things as bills or not. You can also create budgets on there and they also have um, a link or like an uh, option to pretty much get your credit score as well linked on there as well. Uh, Mint is also another great app that does very similar things, but you kind of want to be able to budget at least on a very superficial level, at a basic level, so that you're not just consistently swipe, swipe, swiping your debit or credit card until it declines because that's not really a long-term strategy. Um, this is how you kind of end up destroying your credit score if you use credit cards often at the same time. This is how you make sure that you actually um, pay your bills on time. So let me know how you guys budget and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, I know this video is a little bit rushed, but I'd like to hear what you guys' thoughts and opinions are on this. I didn't really know how to make it as condensed as I would have wanted it to be. All right, I'll see you guys next time.